Hello and welcome to practicum number four. It's two population inference which tells us that we're going to have to get to chapter 10 at some point, either chapter 10, section 1, 2, or 3, depending on what we're comparing. Um, so the research question is should I expect to make more on a typical summer day or on a typical spring day? Okay, so we're looking at two populations. We're looking at the gross sales for summer versus the gross, uh, average gross sales for spring. We know that this is going to be independent samples, so it won't be section 10 2. We know we're looking at averages, because we're looking at typical, so it's not going to be section 10 3, so we're back to section 10 1. And we also know that we should never, ever, ever pool our variances. And the reason for that is when we pool our variances, we're making the assumption that the variances are equal, the population variances are equal. Well, if we don't know what the population variances are, how can we conclude that they're equal? So we're going to go with the not equal uh, two sample, uh, not equal variances, two sample uh, test. And that's going to be on page uh, 434 in the book. It's going to be in that peach colored box. And the confidence interval is going to be the on the top of the right column for there. So let's get started. We need to determine summer and spring, though. There's lots of possibilities here. One possibility is just to use the, the usual seasons. One is to use the uh, meteorological summer and spring. Another is to think of this as, OK, we're looking at a restaurant in a college town. So maybe we should define spring as college spring and summer as college summer. So that would be spring would be somewhere from maybe spring break all the way to the end of the term. And then summer would be from the end of the, the spring term until the beginning of the fall term. That would make sense as well. As long as you defend your choice, everything's going to be fine. And so let's get into our, our data. Um, so we'll open it up. I've already renamed it Practicum 4. Um, so we got to parse the data into its spring and summer. So I'm just going to open up a new worksheet. I make that one bigger so you can see it. So the first column is going to be the spring. And remember that I defined spring as as the the usual seasonal spring, being March 21st to June 20th on average. So I'm looking for March 21st to June 20th. I'm going to copy that and paste. And that'll be the spring of 2014. Summer of 2014 takes us to the 20th of September. And that'll be the top of the next column. And then we'll do spring for 2015 and summer for 2015. And so there we are. I've got the date. For some reason, I carried over the date. I better put a header in there just to remind myself. So I'm going to right click and hit insert. And this will be spring gross sales. And this will be summer gross sales. And we really don't need column A, so I'm going to delete. Don't need B and C, so I'll delete. And there's our data. This is our, I'm going to double click down there to call this our parsed data. So this is the only data we care about. So let's go ahead and analyze it. So from the formula on page 434, there are some sample statistics we need to calculate. We need to calculate x1 bar and x2 bar, s1 and s2, and then n1 and n2. So we'll call this little section over here sample statistics. So the means, the standard deviations, the sample sizes. OK. So again, Remember, it's average. And for standard deviation, it's stdev.s, dot .s for sample. And this is count. And we can just copy and paste those over. It's kind of cool. So that gives us all of the sample statistics we're going to need. Uh, but we are going to need to calculate the degrees of freedom. And that degrees of freedom formula is rather 
daunting, shall we say. Um, let's break it up into two parts. We'll break it up to the numerator and the, and the denominator. That should make things a little bit easier. That numerator is just s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2 squared. Uh, so that's going to be equal s1, so that's a standard deviation, to the power of 2 divided by n1 plus s2 to the power of 2 divided by n2, and that's going to be squared. Again, notice that the caret is found at the top of the 6. So there's the numerator. The denominator is going to be a little bit more complicated. This is going to equal s1 to the power of 2 divided by n1. Well, then that's squared. And then we're going to divide by n1 minus 1. And that's the first term in the denominator. We're going to do the same thing in the second term, except it's going to be in the second. So it's s2 to the power of 2 divided by n2 squared divided by n2 minus 1. So there's the denominator. So the actual degrees of freedom are just going to equal that numerator divided by the denominator. And I like to break things up like that because it makes it a little bit simpler in typing in the formulas in, in uh, Excel. So the, t, so the t multiplier, otherwise known as the critical value, that's just going to equal the t dot inv dot 2t. It's always going to be dot 2t because this is a confidence interval. Uh, probability is 05 because this is a 95% confidence interval. Degrees of freedom is going to be what we just calculated there. So that multiplier is 1.966458. Notice that it's close to 1.96, which is the z value for 95% confidence intervals. And the reason it's so close is because the sample size is so large, or arguably because the degrees of freedom is so large. Um, is there anything else? We need the standard error. That standard error is that square root thing and everything in the square root. S square root, and that's going to be s1 squared divided by n1 plus s2 squared divided by n2. That's a standard error. So it looks like we've got all the parts we need for that confidence interval according to the formula at the top of, of uh, that second column on page 434. We could create something called the point estimate. And that point estimate is just going to equal the difference in the me sample means. OK. So the lower confidence limit is just going to equal that point estimate minus the t multiplier times the standard error. And that upper confidence limit is just going to equal that point estimate plus the t multiplier times the standard error. Let's go ahead and make this down to two decimal places. There we go. So we're 95% confident that the, uh, the mean for spring minus the mean for summer, and that's population means, is between a negative 122 0.80 and 246.55. So spring minus summer, mu sub spring minus mu sub summer is going to be anywhere from a negative 122.80, which would be summer is greater than spring, to 246.55, which is spring greater than summer. So this confidence interval includes zero, so it's reasonable to conclude that there's no significant difference between the summer and the spring average gross sales. Notice again that we're drawing conclusions about the population mean using the sample mean. If all we're looking at are these two years, then we can definitely say that spring had a higher average sales than did the summer. However, we're trying to draw conclusions about the m difference in the means, the population means, the mu's. So instead of just looking at 2014 and 2015 springs and summers, 
this is going to give us information about all springs and summers that this business is open. And that's key. These are just the sample means. We can compare those and know everything we need to know about just those two sets of data. This defines that confidence interval, which gives us the ability to draw conclusions about all average spring and all average summer gross sales. So this is just for 2014, 2015, and that difference is for all. And that's it. Again, since zero dollars is in there, it's reasonable to conclude that there's no significant difference in the average spring gross sales versus the average summer gross sales. Point estimate is $61.88. I'll make that into a dollar sign thing. 88, yep. So the best estimate is 61.88. But here's the confidence interval. And since that includes zero, there's no significant difference. And that's it. Don't forget that we're using the sample to draw conclusions about the population. And that's what's that's the strength of statistics. That's its power. Thank you. Have a great day.